Hello, this is Mike Panaki with Network Protocol Specialists, and in our little session today, we're going to be talking about taps. Now, a lot of times when we go in to capture packets, we use taps to capture these. Now, we're going to bring up our little uh, drawing pencil here so that we can come in and draw on the screen. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say if we have a full duplex Ethernet connection, and that means that we have a transmit on this side going into a receive on this side, and over here we've got a receive on this side, we've got a transmit on that side. What we want to be able to do is come in here and monitor this traffic and send it to our protocol analyzer. So what we're going to find is that there's a couple of different types of taps out there on the market. The first type of tap is what's known as a breakout tap. And in this case, what happens is the data for this link up here on the top is sent out one port of the tap, and the data down here is sent out another port. So this is, again, what's known as a breakout tap. And the thing about a breakout tap is that these are separate RJ45 ports on the tap. That means that when we go to connect an analyzer, that we have to connect both of these to the analyzer, and the analyzer has to be able to take this traffic and resync it. So what we do is we find that companies like Fluke Networks, Fluke Networks, uh, Finisar, etc., build analyzers that can go in and reassemble this. In fact, they can take and resync this traffic right here to within about 20 nanoseconds of each other. So good way to go in and be able to capture full duplex traffic. But one of the things that we find is that an analyzer like this is going to cost us about $20,000. So if we don't want to spend $20,000 on an analyzer like that, but instead what we want to do is be able to use our laptop, that's when we're going to use a different type of tap. So we're going to come back, we're going to take, and we've got our links right here going both directions. This is our transmit, this is our receive, this is our receive, this is our transmit. So in this case we're going to use what's known as a port aggregation tap. And with a port aggregation tap, what it does is it takes that same traffic that we have coming from these two links and it sends it down here and what it does is it takes and buffers that traffic up into a buffer here and it sends that traffic back out a single port that we can then connect to something like our laptop and be able to capture that traffic with a single port. Now the advantage of using something like this is now we're able to aggregate the full duplex traffic here into a single port in our analyzer so we're not having to use an analyzer that can reassemble this. In addition, some of these port aggregation taps will allow us to come back and reinsert packets back into these links so we can still communicate with the connection. So one of the big differences between a breakout tap and a port aggregation tap is that the breakout tap requires an analyzer that can reassemble the data and a port aggregation tap allows us to reassemble that data within this buffer and send it out here. The biggest downside to this is that if this is 100 meg in this direction and this is 100 meg in that direction, then we could have up to 200 meg going into our analyzer, but we only have 100 meg coming out. So this is where we find that there's some port aggregation taps where we can tap a 100 meg link and send it out as gig. This way we can't oversubscribe that output port. But port ag aggregation taps, great little addition to your analysis toolbox so that you can capture full duplex traffic and you don't have to put a hub in here and make it half duplex and still be able to see it with your analyzer. So I hope this helps with some of your network troubleshooting and look forward to more of our videos.